Gates Brown was the greatest pinch hitter in the history of the American League, and he did much to write the history of Tiger Stadium. Gates, what did it mean to you uh, to come to Detroit and play in a ballpark like Tiger Stadium? Well, Joe, you know, when I was, I would say, incarcerated, I, I read a lot of books about Tiger Stadium, Ty Cobb and Heineman Newish and uh, Hank Greenberg and all of them. And I, I knew a lot about the stadium, although i never seen it, but I did a lot of reading after I signed uh, to play for the Tigers. And uh, it, it had a lot of memories, uh, you know, like Ty Cobb, even though, he might not have been one of my favorites. I mean, he was a hell of a ball player, and you got to take your head off to him. But it was just walking out on the field and just looking around at some of the, the seats and, uh, you know, the the way the, the stadium was put together and nice and cozy in right field. God, I love that right field overhang, you know. I just wish I could have played a little more, you know. But uh, it was a good place to hit in, and, and, uh, and I'm also proud of one. I'm one of the few blacks that first started there. You know, you had... He had Dobie in 59, but he was on his way out. Uh, they said Ozzie Virgil was the first black, but he's a Latino now. And uh, then you had Jake Woods and Billy Buton, uh, Bubba Morton. And then, you know, I came along uh, in 63, me and Willie Smith. And, you know, I was, I'd like to say, one of the first five or six blacks that played in Tiger Stadium. And I, I will always remember that because, uh, as we both know, you know, maybe the, the Tiger wasn't always the friendliest, but uh, it was home to me. But the fans treated you well. Oh, very well. You know, that's one thing. I look back, and you had great players like Willie Horton and Norman Cash, and, I mean, the fans would get on them sometime unmercifully. And I'd be struggling, you know, and uh, I never heard, really, I never heard a boo or they just never got on me. I don't know whether they felt sorry for me or or whatever, but, uh, you know, sometime I'd, I watched them and heard them get on Willie, and I'm saying, how in the hell can he take all that, you know, in Cash, you know, because they... They really leaned on them sometimes. But deep down in, they were good fans, and uh, I would always take my hat off to them. I love them. God bless them, because even in my baddest time, they never really got on the gator. Well, you're a people person, I can tell you that, even from the press box, uh, the way we viewed you. You know, you're the only guy that I think played or was a part of the 68 champions and the 84 champions, first as a player, then as a coach. What does that mean to you? I take pride in that, you know what I mean? For number one, they haven't had that many. You know, before 68, what was the last one, 1945? Right. All right, 68, and then I was playing, and then in 84 I was coaching. And uh, I take pride in that. Uh, you know, there's not uh, too many ball players that can say that, especially on the Tigers. I think the only other one might have been Dick Trzuski. He was also coaching and playing in 68. But uh, I take pride in, in being, you know, the last two, and it's been – what, 15, 16 years since, you know, since they had had the last one in 84. And, uh, you know, my dream was always, I said, well, Gates, you'll win one playing, you'll win one coaching, and you'll win one managing. But as we, <laughs> all, <laughs> as we all know, the last part didn't work out. But that was in my dreams, really. All right, 68. I think it was the Red Sox. Sunday afternoon, doubleheader. A man named Gates Brown was kind of influential. Tell me about it. Well, that was that was a long day. You know, we started off, and uh, I think that uh, we got out in front, but by the ninth inning, they had caught up to us, and and Mayo had used all all the other pinch hitters. Now, 1968, I wasn't one of his favorites. I mean, he would rather use the devil than to use Gates for some reason or other. I don't know why. But uh, we get to the 14th inning, bottom of the 14th. He didn't use Matthews, Comer. He didn't use everybody. I was the last one, really. Bottom of the 14th, two outs, nobody on. Uh, I pinched hit, and uh, I got Lee staying in the hole 2-0, and oh, Joe. And I stepped out, and I said to myself, okay, Gates, be patient. Get you a good pitch and turn it loose. And lo and hold, he threw me a fastball that was tailing. I hit it good, but I didn't know if it was high enough. It was a line drive. And when I seen Hawk Harrison turn his back on it, I said to myself, well, Gates, this one is over. And, I mean, I've I never been so happy in all my life. You know, a matter of fact, a reporter, a photographer sent me a picture. I was running around second, and I was clapping. And I never really showed emotion. But that time, I mean, it got the better of me. And I, and now that I was around the second, you know, I said, Gates, you know, you're the luckiest man in the world. And uh, 50,000 people was going crazy. I'll never forget that. Second game? 
Well, the second game, he gave me one of my rare starts, you know, and uh, <laughs> we was behind again going into the ninth. We was behind by three runs, and we kept pecking and pecking and pecking, and all of a sudden, we had tied the ball game. k was on third. Stanley was on first. There was one out, and uh, Sparky Lau was pitching, a left-hander, and I was walking up to the plate, looking back over my shoulder, and Mayo kept giving me the go-ahead sign, so... Uh, you know, he threw me one of those deep sliders. I didn't hit it the, as good as I could have, but the infield was in. And when I seen George Scott go to his go to his right and try to backhand it, you know, I knew he was going to have a run either way. But uh, the ball got through. It snuck through. And, uh, you know, we won that game also 6-5. to five, And, again, 50,000 people went crazy. And uh, I had goosebumps, believe it or not.